13 Lectures on General History of China by Liu Zhang Chapter 5 Han Dynasty 1 The Establishment of Liu Bang and the Han Dynasty The Western Han Dynasty, 206 BC to 8 AD, was established by Liu Bang. And he was born into a plebeian family and once worked as a county prefect at the grassroots of the officialdom in the Qin Dynasty. During the Western Han Dynasty, Many historical lessons were drawn about the fall of the previous dynasty. Since the Qin dynasty, the history of feudal society has been filled with peasant wars and the struggles of emperors who wanted to establish a monarchy. Liu Bang issued a number of reasonable policies such as allowing plebeians who lost their identity or property ownership before wartime to recover these things with the approval of the government. Plebeians were able to obtain a registered residence in this way. Meanwhile, a number of slaves were set free. After the passing of Liu, the dynasty fell under the dictatorship of the Empress Liu, 195 BC to 180 BC. Following that, a prosperous society flourished for 39 years during the reigns of the emperors Wen, 180 BC to 157 BC, and Jing, 157 BC to 141 BC. Following the succession of the Emperor Wu of Han, 141 BC to 87 BC, the scene began to change. Ban Jiu, the author of the history of the Han Dynasty, praised the Emperor Wu of Han for his outstanding political and military achievements. He consulted all scholars and promoted the talented ones for their greatest contributions to the empire. This forms a remarkable comparison with the first emperor of the Qin dynasty who ordered the burning of books and the burying scholars alive. In Wu's reign he was surrounded by many people who had integrity in their thoughts, deeds, morality, recommendations of talents and writings. Two. Centralization and selection of officials The replacement of the infefment system with the system of provinces and counties in Qin Dynasty impacted upon ancient Chinese society in two ways. First of all, in terms of regime, early tribal states were succeeded by geographical states as relationships of blood were replaced by geographical relationships in ancient Chinese society. Secondly, in terms of administration, Aristocratic politics was transformed into bureaucratic politics as the hereditary seigneurs were replaced by professional bureaucrats. The Qin continued to add new provisions to the laws, making them into among the most ruthless and tightest codes in the Chinese history. Having conquered all of China, the Qin Dynasty, 221 to 206 BC, was the first unified imperial dynasty. Its founding emperor styled himself as Shi Di, the first emperor of Qin. The title of emperor was adopted by the rulers of the Han Dynasty and continued to be used in China for 2,000 years. Since the Qin and Han Dynasties, imperialism had been the core position of the ancient Chinese political system. In order to deify the emperors, the Qin and Han dynasties formulated a special series of names for the monarch's everyday particulars, such as food, clothing, housing, and travel. From the Han dynasty, every emperor possessed their own temple name, posthumous name, and era name. Emperor Wu of Han, 141 BC to 87 BC, is regarded as being the first emperor to declare an era name which had a literary meaning or which reflected characteristics of the political landscape at the time. Such as Jian Yuan, Yuan Ding, Jian Wu, Yang Ping, and so on. With the purpose of guaranteeing succession, the rulers of the Han Dynasty set up a system of crown princes after having learned their lessons from Qin Shi Huang. The main principle of the crown prince was that the empress's eldest son would be crowned even though he was not the eldest or virtuous son of the emperor. In the Han dynasty, when an emperor was too young to handle the state affairs, the dowager empress would hold court. 
Hence, the conflict between the Dowager Empress and the Emperor became the lurking peril. The Dowager Empress's holding court enabled her consort clans to control the state affairs. While the Emperor only obtained the support from the eunuchs who readily had the opportunity to be close to the Emperor. The place that Emperor lived and worked was called the Forbidden Court. The offices of the three councillors and the nine ministers were based outside of the Forbidden Court, in the so-called Fu Si. Thus, on behalf of the formal central government, the three councillors and the nine ministers were called the Outside Court. As the formal cabinet, the three councillors and the nine ministers were based far away from the emperors, and their roles thereby evolved according to the administrative institutions. This structure, with its competing interests of the forbidden court and the outside court, had an important impact upon subsequent Chinese regimes. In the Eastern Han Dynasty, the Secretary Chancery replaced the former office of Chancellor and was placed in charge of administration. The Imperial Supervising Institution took the place of the previous Supervising Institution and was in charge of censorship. The Grand Commandant was chiefly in charge of the military. In terms of local government, in the Qin Dynasty and the Western Han Dynasty, the whole empire was divided into two political units, the prefecture and county, Xi'an, in order of size. The provinces were headed by inspectors. The head of a prefecture was called a prefect, and the head of a county was named magistrate. A complete system for selecting officials in the Han Dynasty. The most important system for selecting officials in the Han Dynasty was the quota system. As a system for recommendation, the review system was set up in the period of Emperor Wen of Han and Emperor Wu of Han. The recommendations covered two aspects recommending the persons noted for their filial piety, Shao Lian, and recommending the scholars who were certified, Shu Kai. Shao Lian who was recommended by his local government would generally be appointed to an unofficial post in the central government. After training in officialdom, he would be posted as a substantial official according to his actual capability. The anointing, Zheng Zhao, referred to a special way of selecting officials by which the emperors chose and appointed particular officials on his own. The anointing emerged in the era of Qin Shi Huang. In the Han Dynasty, most of the nominees of the anointing were well-known scholars and paragons of morality. The rulers of the Han dynasty advocated the theory that one who has real property has the virtue of perseverance. This was why that they stipulated that the amount of family property should count as one of the criteria for being appointed an official. As a result, the sale of official posts and titles started to occur in the era of Emperor Wu. As a supplement to the system of selecting officials in ancient China, the sale of official posts and titles at the beginning of the Han Dynasty overrode the rule that merchants were not able to serve as officials. More importantly, the rule of Confucianism had become the essential principle for the value standards of officials from the time of Emperor Wu of Han onwards. Hence, an array of professional scholarly-oriented officials suited to ruling a grand unified state started to predominate in the Chinese administrative system. 3. Han Dynasty Law at the beginning of the Han Dynasty, with lessons having been learned from the Qin government. 
The cruel and complex components of the Qin law were abolished and a less cruel and brief nine chapters code of Han was compiled. Emperor Wu of Han appointed to amend the laws and regulations which thereby gradually develop into being complicated and dense. The Nine Chapters Code of Han emphasized the imperial power which was the source of laws and nothing could exceed beyond. In the Han Dynasty, argumentation of the Confucian classics became the foundation of jurisprudence. This mixed legalism with the theory of ritual. As for the essential principle of the legal system, Confucianism insisted that the virtue and moral education should go in front of the punishments that were regarded as the subsidiary tool of the reign. By consolidating rights and punishments into a whole system, the integrative frame of ancient Chinese legal system was founded under the Han. In terms of the categories of punishments, some forms of corporal punishment were abolished. For instance, branding, the amputation of the nose, and the cutting off of toes were replaced by imprisonment, being beaten with bamboo. And the death penalty. This reflected the development of the judiciary in the Han Dynasty. 4. The prevailing social customs in the Qin and Han dynasties the total number of cities increased successively in the Qin and Han dynasties. Generally speaking, cities were established in places where the provinces and counties had already been created. Overall, the number of cities was equal to the number of counties at that given moment. After the state of Qin unified China, 221 BC, the territory of China was unparalleled compared with any time in the past. According to research, the Qin emperor originally set up 36 provinces outside the capital city, later enlarging this figure to 41, and the number of counties nationwide reached around 1,000. The number of cities reached 1,100 during the Qin dynasty. The number of cities exceeded 1,500 during the reign of Emperor Ping of the Han dynasty. And the number of cities within that territory reached 120 by the Han dynasty. Along with the strengthened control of the central feudal government over northwest and southwest regions, numerous new cities appeared near the borders. For example, Emperor Wu set up Wu Wei, Zhang Ye, Jiaquan, and Dunhuang four provinces in the regions to the west of the Yellow River which was known to be the territory of the Xiongnu. By the end of Western Han Dynasty, these four provinces governed more than 35 counties. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, the quantity of the counties in this area kept increasing and reached 43 counties eventually. These types of provincial cities and county cities were originally established as military fortresses. However, with the population booming and economic growth, they gradually became the economic and cultural centers of their regions. The scale of constructions was continuously growing in each city, especially during Eastern Han dynasties. A form of country estate economy was presented which meant that landowners could be self-sufficient and they would organize their own commercial exchange within their sphere of influence. This type of phenomenon became a new emerging power in the society which influenced the traditional social norm. In this period, women considered to be beautiful would typically have red lips. 
pearly white teeth, a long neck, fair skin tone with healthy pink reflections, as well as a tall figure. The made pottery figurine which was excavated from Pit No. 1 of Mwangdui as well as the kneeling made pottery figurine from the Han Yangling Mausoleum exhibits the best snapshots of how people in the Han Dynasty lived. Chen Shiwang associated monogamy with establishing a centralized authority. He made efforts to unify and standardize the marriage norms. Moving through to the Han Dynasty. Although regulations relating to marriage, divorce, and remarriage were loosened, the moral principles enacted in the Qin Dynasty had already been woven into the society. A systemic institution for offering sacrifices to gods and ancestors became formalized during the Qin and Han dynasties. The standard practice of worshipping the heaven in the southern suburbs and offering sacrifice to the earth in the northern suburbs was formed by the time of Emperor Cheng of Han, 33-7 BC. Sorcery and demonological activities deeply influenced every aspect of people's daily lives during the Qin and Han dynasties. An excavated series of bamboo slips named Rishu from Hubei province contained one book about geomantic omens. According to the Rishu, 151 days, which equaled to 41.3% of the year, were recorded as the taboo days. The Chinese people's self-consciousness and freedom were limited under such a superstitious cultural atmosphere. Papermaking technology was invented in the Western Han Dynasty, with further innovations being made by Kai Lun in the Eastern Han Dynasty. The invention of papermaking technology was a groundbreaking event in the Qin and Han cultural life. The invention of paper totally transformed how Chinese people would record information in history. 5. The Wen Jing Age The Wen Jing Age of Order Wen Jing Ji Ji refers to the historical period in the Western Han Dynasty dating from 180 BC, when Emperor Wen ascended to the throne, to 141 BC. When Emperor Jing died, the Golden Age did not come to an end after these two emperors but, in fact, reached a zenith under Emperor Jing's successor, Emperor Wu. Despite some major policy changes during the latter's reign, when the Western Han Dynasty finally came to power, it was faced with a parlous economic situation. The new ruler's first priority was to set about restoring stability and bring about a revival in economic activity and a return to normalcy. The first act of Liu Bang on entering the capital city of Shenyang was to announce, in consultation with his advisor Zhang Liang, his basic strategy for restoring stability. When Emperor Wen ascended the throne, the central government was still in disarray after the troubles of Empress Dowager Liu's reign. The local feudal lords were very powerful. The economy had not yet fully recovered from the traumas of war. Adopting a Taoist, legalist approach, Emperor Wen took measures designed to give the people a respite and these gradually helped to revive the economy, restore the country to financial health, and build up the state's grain stores. The legal system underwent a major reform during Emperor Wen's reign. Drawing a lesson from the fall of the Qin dynasty, he repealed the law punishing subversive opinions as well as the law under which when a crime was committed, the criminal's whole family would be punished. 
He abolished bodily mutilation as a form of punishment. The steady progress made during the Wen Jing period culminated in the reign of Emperor Wu, 141 to 87 BC, which marked the zenith of the Western Han Golden Age. Shortly after his accession, he began to replace Emperor Wen's passive and conservative style of government for a more proactive approach. Confucianism became the dominant philosophy. The principle of the interaction between heaven and man provided a new theoretical basis underpinning the supreme authority of the emperor. Emperor Wu reinforced his control at the local level by dividing the whole country into 13 provinces and appointing officials to supervise these in accordance with the so-called Six Articles. The right to mint coin was returned to the central government, and salt extraction and iron production state enterprises. At the same time a large number of people were sent to the northwest to cultivate the land. Water conservancy projects were undertaken in the central plains. Above all, in a shift towards an expansionist foreign policy, Emperor Wu dispatched generals Wei Qing and Huo Qubing, among others, to conduct a highly successful campaign against the Xiongnu. He created the Silk Road, the trade route connecting China with Central Asia and further west. During this period the empire became a vast territory peopled by many different nationalities. Magnificent palaces and pavilions were erected in and around the capital Chang'an. 6. Thoughts and philosophy of this period The most influential indigenous ideological culture of ancient Chinese thought was mainly derived from Confucianism and Taoism. Confucianism and Taoism competed with and influenced one another during the spring and autumn period, 770-476 BC, and the Warring States period, 475 to 221 BC. They became the major philosophical impulse among the hundred schools of philosophical thought, Zuzi Bai Jia movement. During the Han Dynasty, Confucianism became the orthodox thought and was established as the official curriculum. The major Confucian texts and research based upon them became known as the Confucian Classics. Taoism and Taoist thought exerted a deep influence among scholars and the populace. Buddhism was introduced into China during the late Western Han Dynasty, 202 BC to 6 AD and the early Eastern Han Dynasty, 25-20 AD. It came into conflict with, but was also reconciled with, indigenous thought and cultures. After a long period of conflict and reconciliation, a form of Buddhism with Chinese characteristics emerged. Religious thought as one important constituent of the wider history of social thinking. Within the history of Chinese thought, indigenous Taoism and imported Buddhism have exerted a great influence. Taoism as a typical Chinese indigenous religion and the essence of Taoism as Tao. According to Taoism, it is possible for everybody to become an immortal through the proper practice of austerity. As Tao is said to be omnipresent, if one practices austerity seriously, one will obtain Tao. Once one obtains Tao, then one will live in harmony with it forever and finally become immortal. The highest inspiration for Taoism is to live forever as an immortal. 
Thus, various kinds of thoughts and methods have been put forward in order to achieve this. The Taoist thought of Laozi and Zhuangzi is not a religion per se. Yet the Taoist religion borrowed some propositions from Taoist thought, abstracted them, and transformed them into a religious outlook, which discards nature, in the pursuit of an eternal world. Taoist religious thought has several sources. The first one is Confucius and Zhuangzi. Taoist thought provided a theoretical foundation the emergence of the Taoist religion in the shape of Tao, regimens, and immortal thought. The Book of Laozi has already mentioned, Tao of eternal life. In the early days of the Taoist religion, the important task was to deify Laozi and Zhuangzi and distort the books Laozi and Zhuangzi into Taoist scriptures. At the end of the Han dynasty, Laozi was honored as the creator of Taoism. Who rules as the hierarch and chief deity? Another source is the Huang Lao school. The school is thus named in recognition of the thought of the Yellow Emperor in order to indicate that it possesses a long prehistory. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, the school placed more emphasis on regimen and immortal thoughts. In the society of the later Eastern Han Dynasty, it was popular to worship Huang Lao and the school took on more the character of a religion. Many things besides are related to Taoist religious thought, including Mohist thought, the popular tales about immortals, and the Fang Tu Fang Shu in the Warring States period and the Qin and Han dynasties. Also related to this are the worship of nature and the worship of God and ghosts in primitive religion. The sorcery concepts found in the country religion, and the yin-yang and five elements theory. The influence of Confucian thought upon Taoist religious thought is indicated, for example, by the promotion of the virtue of ethics found in early Taoist religion. The scriptures of great peace, typing Jing, from the Eastern Han Dynasty was the early Taoist religious classic. It asks its disciples to be loyal to their monarch and to exhibit filial piety and to respect seniors. For the first time in history, the concepts of heaven, earth emperor, father, and teacher are elided into one. Zhe Hong, 283 to 343 AD, thought that the preconditions to seeking immortality should be loyalty, piety, harmonious living, abstinence, benevolence, and trust. Later versions of the Taoist religion are similar, and they do not seek to overturn the above mentioned ideas. The state of Qin defeated six other states and established a unified feudal society in 221 BC. How did Chinese thought evolve and develop during this new historical age? From the spring and autumn periods and the warring states period. Finding reconciliation within the hundred schools of philosophical thought gradually became the dominant philosophical exercise. Many different forms of reconciliation were attempted. Here too will be described. One is centered upon Confucianism and absorbed some aspects from the yin-yang and the five elements theory, as well as legalism and Taoism. This is represented by the thought of Dong Zhongshu from the Han Dynasty. The other form is metaphysics, Xuan Shui from the Wei and Jin Dynasties. This new thought focused on the reconciliation of Confucianism and Taoism. 
At the early stage of the Han Dynasty, different schools were temporarily revived. Confucianism and Taoism were the most popular. Even so, among the overall social thoughts, the mysterious yin-yang and the five elements theory had a comparatively greater influence. It was not until the reign of Emperor Wu of the Han Dynasty, 14187 BC, when the centralized government became gradually stabilized that the balance of power between Confucianism and Taoism shifted. Emperor Wu laid a solid political foundation for the centralized government, and then Confucianism was given priority. Here the thought of Dong Zhongshu must be mentioned. Dong Zhongshu, 179 BC to 104 BC, was a Confucian master in the Western Han Dynasty. He had very rich political experiences and persistently examined one of the classical studies of Confucianism, the commentary of Gong Yang on the Spring and Autumn Annals. Dong Zhongshu held the position of Ba Shikuan during the reign of Emperor Jing of the Han Dynasty, 156 BC to 141 BC. When Emperor Wu of the Han Dynasty called for talented persons and papers, Dong Zhongshu thrice proposed that Confucianism should be used as a political ideology. In Dong Zhongshu's thought there is a mysterious relationship between heaven and man. Heaven governs man and man's actions can also move heaven. Natural calamities and auspicious signs demonstrate God's chastisement or commendation of man. The monarch must act according to providence. Otherwise, he will be punished by heaven. Dong Zhongshu hoped to use the authority of heaven to constrain the power of the monarch. Thus he said, people should yield to and completely obey their emperor, so does emperor to heaven. This is the profound connotation of the spring and autumn annals. Among the different pre-Chin schools of thought, Mohism proposed to use religion to govern a nation and to regard heaven's will as the basis for the nation's legal system. In this respect, Dong Zhongshu's thought is similar to that of Mohism. However, he placed more emphasis on seeking theoretical evidence from the yin-yang and five elements theory. However, he did not interpret nature from the perspective of the natural law of heaven but sealed his ideas with the mythical yin-yang wuxing and thus replaced the ethical doctrine of the humanistic spirit evident in the early Confucian school. This indicates that after the Qin and Han dynasties, those who sought to elucidate ideas and doctrines drew their materials from the pre-Qin period. These were utilized or distorted, synthesized or disseminated and then formed into the ideas of that particular era.